Hey everyone, Tio here. This is my artist review of the Samsung S23 Ultra. There are already countless reviews for this phone out there on YouTube. My review will focus on the drawing experience you can expect with the included Samsung S Pen on the phone when it comes to drawing. First of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Samsung Singapore. So big thanks to them for providing the review unit again. Let me give you the bottom line up front. If you're looking for the best phone or if you're looking for one of the best phones out there in the market right now, this is one to consider. This is a fantastic phone that provides excellent value for money, provided you have the budget, more so over the iPhone. And I'm saying that as an iPhone user. The reason why I can't buy Android phones, not that I don't want to buy Android phones, is because most Android phones do not offer 25 frames per second video recording. Most Android phones do not offer the PAL recording standard. And this is one of those phones that cannot record at 25 frames per second. So I can't buy this phone, even though I actually like Android phones. If you are not picky about video recording standards, then 25 FPS or the lack of 25 FPS is not going to matter to you. You can get this phone with 8 gigs of RAM or 12 gigs. You can get the phone with 128 gigs of storage, up to one terabyte of storage. And these are the prices for the phone. So this is a very beautiful phone with solid build quality. The design looks really nice. And this feels very comfortable in hand thanks to the curved edges. The edge of the display is still curved, but it's less curved and I personally like flat surfaces. So this display is less curved, which means if you have the S Pen close to the edge, the pen will not slide off the edge and you can actually draw right to the edge. The curved display makes the bezels look so thin and you don't have to worry about accidental touches by the side because the touch screen sensor will only detect your finger from the front. When you are watching videos on this display with the thin bezels, it feels so immersive. That's my daughter crawling out from the room looking for me in the morning. and. You get this immersive feel when you are using apps as well. The resolution of this display is 1440 by 3080 and you can even see the design for the icons inside this icon folder. So all the visuals look really sharp with no noticeable pixelation. The refresh rate is 120Hz so you can expect very smooth scrolling and animation. This display is the so-called Dynamic AMOLED 2X from Samsung and the colors look terrific. It has fantastic contrast and the brightness is really high. This display has good colors and contrast even under direct sunlight. On the bottom of the phone, you can find a slot for the Samsung S Pen. The pen is only available for the S23 Ultra, not the S23 and 23 Plus. That's the speaker. The audio quality for the speaker is fantastic. The audio is clear and has good surround. That's the USB-C port with USB 3.2 transfer speed. So the transfer speed is very fast. And that's the SIM tray that can take two nano SIMs. Unfortunately, there is no micro SD card slot on this phone. So make sure you get enough storage the minimum storage capacity for the S23, 23 Plus, and 23 Ultra are 128, 256, and 256 gigabytes, respectively. The image quality you can get from the photos and videos is fantastic. The cameras here on the back are wide, ultra wide, tally, and 10x tally. They all have optical image stabilization except for the ultra wide. The cameras do protrude out from the back, but if you have a case on, the case can actually flush with the camera. And the power button and volume buttons are by the side here. Face unlock works effectively and fast, and there is also fingerprint sensor beneath the display if you want to use that. The punch hole camera here is small. It's not as 
obnoxious compared to the dynamic island you can find on the iPhone so this is just a better design this one uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip which is a very powerful processor it's almost impossible to make the phone lag and you can play games with intensive 3D graphics very smoothly and the battery life is amazing you can get at least 10 to 12 hours of on-screen time sometimes even more so you can get at least two days of use for this phone with a single charge sometimes up to three days the battery life you can get from the 5000 mAh battery capacity is just amazing and there is 45 watt fast charging so this phone is running on Android 13 and there is Samsung UI 5.1 on top and there are many useful features. The one that I like is this swipe out panel where you can add more quick access apps and also other tasks. These are the shortcuts you can add to the side panel, apps, tasks, live messages, contacts, I'm not sure what this is, weather, tools and reminders, clipboard. You can tap on an empty space to turn the display off, tap on the screen to turn on always on display, use the fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone, and when the screen is off, you can take out the S Pen, tap on the screen and start writing. And because this is Android, you can install your own launcher to customize the home screen however you like and install icon packs. Android OS is so customizable. Now there are people who say that Android is too customizable, but the thing is this, you don't have to customize Android OS if you don't want to. You can just use Samsung UI, which already works great. Backup is very important, and there are three ways to backup this phone. Samsung Cloud offers 15 gigabytes of online storage, which is not enough to back up the whole phone. So Samsung Cloud only backs up the messages, contacts, calendar, settings, and the apps that you download, shortcuts to the apps that you download. Google Drive will back up almost everything except for the files and folders that you have on your phone. So Google Drive will actually back up photos and videos that you create, but not the files and folders um, that you have. So if you want to back up like everything you have to use external file storage transfer basically just connect an external storage using the USB-C port here and transfer or backup everything to the external storage so this is good because this will backup everything external storage backup is very important because that's the only way to backup everything let me explain a bit further some of the drawing apps that you may use will save the artwork within the app itself. The art will not be saved into the folders in the phone. So if you use Google Drive to back up the phone, remember earlier I said Google Drive does not back up the files in the folder. That means you will not be able to back up the art that you have inside the app. So that's why you need to use external storage to back up the phone. If the drawing app you use can save your art to the cloud server, that's great because you will have your art backed up all the time, but not all drawing apps provide cloud backup. All right, let's talk about the Samsung S Pen, which is hidden here in this slot. This pen is small and thin, it's not comfortable to draw with for long periods of time, but for quick sketches and taking notes, it works fine. The build quality is all right. The surface is matte textured and it has good grip. And there is even one side button here. The side button can be quite useful if the drawing app you use supports side button shortcuts. So that's the pen nib. This pen nib is rubberized, so it provides slight friction on the glass surface. And because the pen tip is rubberized, it's not going to make loud tapping sounds when you are writing or drawing. This small pen is convenient because it's always there in the phone. However, when I'm drawing at home, I would prefer to use a larger pen, which is more comfortable to 
work with. So this is the Samsung S Pen that comes with the tablet. This also has a side button. And this is the Statler Norris Digital Jumbo, which has an eraser at the back, but this does not have the side button. The weight of this phone is 234 grams, which is not that heavy. So this is a phone I can hold easily in one hand and draw. It's just that it's going to take some time to get used to two moving parts. The portrait orientation works great when you're drawing portrait subjects, but if you want to draw a portrait subject holding the phone like this, it feels a bit weird. And also when holding the phone like this, I prefer to hold it this way so that it's more stable. You can also hold it this way, it's just personal preference. Or you can put it on the table. If you put it on the table and you don't have a case for the phone, as you can see, the camera bump will actually um, affect the stability. It's easier to use this phone to draw a main subject versus drawing a complicated scene with lots of details. Because when you have lots of detail, you have to zoom in and out quite often. This 6.8 inch display is big, but it's not as big compared to drawing on a tablet or drawing on the Samsung Z Fold 4, which provides a much better drawing experience because that phone is so much larger. So with this phone, um, the limitation is the screen size and the aspect ratio. The pen performance is good. For quick sketches, um, as a portable sketch pad, this phone is very convenient. Let's take a look at this more detailed scene that I drew the other day. Let's turn off the shadows and the colors to let you see the line art. So this was quite challenging to draw because I had to zoom in to draw the details and then I have to zoom out to check where I am and zoom in again just to draw the details. Notice that splotch of gray there. The tilt sensitivity for this pen is not that great. I'll show you uh, later on. Anyway, when it comes to drawing complicated scenes, you will have to zoom in and out, zoom in and out. So it's gonna take some time to get used to. And even though the pen tape is rubberized, it's actually still quite smooth on the glass um, to the point that it's kind of slippery. So if you are holding the phone like this and drawing with the pen, that slipperiness can actually affect your drawing. Uh, if you have to draw very detailed line art, uh, that can affect your work. But if your art is the sketchy style, then yeah, sure. Uh, the looser lines may actually add more to the character of the sketch. The overall drawing experience is actually uh, positive. It's just that it will take some time to get used to drawing on this small display. Apps with minimal user interface elements will work well on a phone with limited size. So this app that I'm using is Concepts and the user interface is actually quite minimal. There is this tool wheel here and the layers palette is here. But because the aspect ratio is so wide and the height is so short, I can only see two layers at one time. If I have to look for the layers, I will have to scroll quite a bit or maybe I can just push the palette here to the right side. And on the right side, I can see three layers instead of two. So, um, of course, the user interface element will affect your drawing experience. Let me turn on some of the colors uh, that you saw earlier, and let's zoom in. Now, this phone is definitely more than powerful enough to run all the drawing apps that are available from the Google Play Store. And this is actually just a very simple sketch. Yeah, so I had great difficulty drawing this because of the small screen. Drawing this is much easier because I don't have to zoom in and out that often. So let me show you the 
side button shortcut with concepts you can go into the settings and set this button to select so if i want to delete this line for example i can press the side button to choose this line here and delete and i can do that for this line as well if you're using a pen that has no side button you will have to use the selector shortcut here select delete and change back to the drawing tool but if you have the side button you can just press it here and once you release you're back to drawing so that's quite convenient this app also has shortcuts for two three and four finger gestures so if i use two fingers i can undo three fingers to redo whether the drawing app will support finger gestures will depend on the app itself because some of the extra gestures are not universal by default, you will definitely be able to zoom in and out, pan and rotate, just that the two finger, three or four finger shortcuts may not be available for all apps. And the uh, palm rejection you can expect with the pen and the phone is fantastic. For drawing apps where you can choose pen only input, you can only draw with the pen so for example with concepts if i try to draw with my finger or with my palm nothing will happen i've set the finger gesture to pen so if i have my palm on the display you can see i will not be able to introduce any straight strokes so palm rejection with this app is excellent let me show you another app so this is Infinite Painter, which is another fantastic drawing app on Android. So if you zoom in all the way, you can see the artwork actually will fill the screen. So it's quite nice to be able to draw on such a big screen, but it's still considered a small screen. Let me just hide the colors to let you see the line art. This sketch was quite challenging to draw as well because it's a scene with a lot of details so again when drawing this i had to like zoom in to draw the details let me just uh, switch to a brush to draw the details yeah so i have to zoom in to draw the details and zoom out again to check the details but the overall drawing process is pretty smooth again this is a very quick and sketchy sketch i still can't get used to the phone moving because of the camera bump behind so if you want to buy this phone for drawing definitely get a case and try to get a case where the case can flush with the camera behind so that if you have the phone on the table it's not going to do this Infinite Painter is probably the appropriate alternative on Android and this app is quite enjoyable to draw with the user interface design is very minimalist so there are the tools here and here behind that button this is the layers palette on the side again the layers palette is limited by the height so if you have many layers you will have to like scroll through let me just turn on the colors again shadows let me zoom in and out so the zooming in and out the animation is very smooth and very fluid this phone is great for creating quick sketches like this if you are someone who likes to draw a lot of details i would probably recommend you go with the samsung z4 which has a bigger screen which will allow you to draw the details more easily because if you are drawing a scene like this with so much details it's quite challenging to work on a small display this was actually drawn on the samsung tab s8 ultra tablet the 14.6 inch tablet so to draw something like this with this phone um, it can be done it's just that it's going to be quite tedious with all the zooming in and out there are many good drawing apps available from the Google Play Store and these are some options. My favorites are Infinite Painter, which is not free, but it's a one-time purchase, and Concepts, which is based on the freemium model, but some tools are locked behind a paywall, but the 
tools are one-time purchases as well. If you are looking for a phone that you can draw on when you're out and about, this phone is a good one to consider. It looks good. It has fantastic build quality. The performance is excellent and the drawing experience is pretty good, only limited by the aspect ratio. The other phone you can check out is the Samsung Z4, which I have also reviewed from the artist's perspective. I will link to that review in the video description below. Alright, if you guys have other questions regarding this phone that I did not cover in my review, let me know in the comment section below. See you guys in the next video. Bye.